Welcome to Hello Church. We're in the middle of season two. This is episode eight of season two, and I'm excited because we're talking about the sermon what it takes to write a sermon. We're breaking down each individual part. We talked about illustrations last week, Justin, and today we're discussing a subject that's near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, so question, are you following the Ten Commandments? Okay. <laughs> now, not, not, you know, not the biblical Ten Commandments. No, but we the, want you to follow those we, as well. We sure do, that's appropriate. The Ten Commandments of Sermon Graphics. And I, we have a list, mm -hmm. and pastors, you might be surprised at how many of these Ten Commandments you are breaking. So that's what we're going to be talking about today: the Ten Commandments of sermon graphics. Yeah, and, and this is important. So, like, let's listen. If you're a pastor and you're saying, "Hey, you know, they're talking, this is the graphics episode. Mm -hmm. This is not for me." Believe me, I, I think there's going to be a few nuggets here that you can take away that you can apply that will make a difference for your sermon series and your messages. Yeah, so we're gonna be talking about artwork. Sermon series, sermon artwork today. And I have a question. Uh, I've got us uh, a discussion starter. Okay. I want you to respond to us. Who creates your sermon series artwork? So if you're watching this on YouTube, post in the comment section, say, hey, I, you know, I, I actually use Ministry Pass, or we have the graphic designer on the team, or, I just pass it to our youth pastor. I like, do it myself. Yeah, he knows how to use a computer. She knows how to use computers. So make sure to post that comment. You can also email us, hello at ministrypass.com. So send those in. We'd love to hear your responses and love to, to share those uh, in our next episode. Uh, we wanna know who creates your artwork. Are they on staff? Are they volunteers? Or are they us? I hope, I kinda hope they're us. Kind of hope their ministry pass. Yeah, I do too. And let me just say this. Here's a few thoughts on sermon series graphics. And this might be the why behind the, you should listen to this episode. Graphics for your series create you know, some consistency in your church branding. They reaffirm and solidify your message. And mm -hmm. you were talking about this before we started, about stained glass. Yeah. Even just artwork in general yeah. from... You know, probably the second century on, we found in, in catacombs uh, artwork from the early Christians. Uh, at the beginning, it was mostly Old Testament artwork, but this artwork would help people to remember and understand these stories. You have to remember too, a lot of people were illiterate, and so they could look at this artwork and they could remember, oh, that's the story of, of Abraham, that's the story of this individual. It reinforced what they were teaching, and art just in general makes us feel a certain way. When we approach art, it makes us feel emotions. Uh, we could feel angry, uh, we, could, we could feel sad, we could feel uh, charged in a way. And so I love it when a great piece of artwork used to promote a sermon helps us to really kind of understand our approach. Sometimes it can be really simple. And when people look at that, they say, okay, like this, this isn't fluff, like this is, we're really getting back to the basics. Mm -hmm. It could be something very, very artistic and very edgy where it's like, hey, th this is very relevant for us today. Uh, we could approach it and we just, we kind of we kind of just feel something. Uh, so I, I really love how artwork has an opportunity to, like you said, solidify or reaffirm the message of the Bible. And let me say this, great artwork won't make a sermon series memorable, mm -hmm. but a, a memorable sermon series will benefit from great artwork, from great sermon graphics and series graphics. So mm -hmm. a question I have, Wade, and this goes back to my bivocational days. Yeah. When I was a bivocational pastor and I'm preparing a message every week, I'm going to meetings, going, you know, coordinating with volunteers. And oh, by the way, I'm also creating my entire slide deck and the sermon series graphics for that week and, and you know. And then you also have this thing called a, a full-time job. And, <laughs> and, and we got that, right? You gotta pay the bills. Yeah. And one of the questions I had, someone asked me, and they said, listen, you're, you're, you're great at, at the design. You're great at the creative stuff. But should you be doing this? Mm -hmm. And that was a question I had to wrestle with, and I was really particular because I, you know, I started working in Photoshop from I was like 15 years old. Yeah. So I've been working in Photoshop now for almost 25 years. I do it a lot less today than I did in those days. But they said, "Hey, should you be doing this?" Like, I think you, your I think your math's a little off because that would make you over 40. If you, it, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're 
you're not doing yourself justice. <laughs> Let's see. 15 to 20 is 5. And then 15. No, no, I'm 39. So it's almost 25 years, 24 years okay. at age 15. Okay. I mean, it's homeschool math, right? Okay. It's okay. close. There, yeah, so it's I close, just needed to be close for homeschool okay. math. Okay. Yeah. But should you be doing it? And Pastor, if you're doing all the gra- graphics, if you're doing all the work, there's several resources, there's several platforms, there's several services that you can leverage so that you have the freedom to mm-hmm. be. A, a pastor, not a graphic designer, right? Ministry Pass, we created a really a large part out of those pains I was feeling as a bivocational pastor. We came along and we, we said, hey, let's create a resource for, for busy pastors at smaller churches that have a limited resources mm-hmm. uh, you know, at their disposal and don't have a lot of time. And let's let's partner with them. So yeah, and, and here's something too. So maybe maybe you're even saying this is kind of a new deal. I don't know if we've announced this yet uh, on the podcast, but you might even say, well, I kind of like I I like to use other people's graphics, but at the same time, I like to have an opportunity to brand them or tweak them for us. We were thinking a lot about that at Ministry Pass, and we actually um, uh, we're we're putting our designs you're, you're, you're breaking this right now right yeah, here. breaking it right now okay so we're putting our designs on canvas so if you're a member of ministry pass uh you can actually download the psd of our files you can download the jpegs and just use them as is or you can open them up in canva and you can edit them quickly and easily so if you see like if there's a sermon series that's called identity you could pull it up and and really within about 20 seconds it's it's so fast yeah, you could change wild. it to, you could change it to Ephesians you could say oh this is a, a series on Ephesians and, and a lot of people don't have Photoshop yeah and so it's th- very this is why we wanted to make Canva and a Canva integration available for yeah. everyone so yeah and we've got a, a large uh, pretty much all of our new series from the last couple of years they're already on there and we're kind of working our way backwards um, but that's that's there too so depending on where you're at whether you say hey. You might be listening to this, you might have a graphic designer, and that's cool. Or you might be listening to this and you say, hey, I've got ministry pass. Or you say, I've got ministry pass, but I'm looking for something just kind of a little more custom. We wanna help you there too. Um, But let's let's go ahead and jump into the 10 commandments of branding sermon series graphics. And I feel like, Justin, I'll probably lean on you a little bit more because you're more of the graphic designer than me. I've designed a little bit, but not not that much. Yeah. So let's dive right. In. Should I add like "thou shalt" on the fr- on the front of these? Like it would be funny for the first two, and then we'll get probably. Yeah, old. we we get really annoyed. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you. All right. So here's the first commandment of sermon series graphics: ask questions. What is the big idea of the message? I mean, this is this is sort of paramount to what we're talking about when you're first developing mm-hmm. your message. You, you sort of need to ask the same questions when you're developing sermon series artwork or you're working with a volunteer and they're needing direction so to speak you Mm -hmm. need to define for them what is the big idea of the message what is the felt need that the series is is going over what what books or passages are you going to be using and then what is the overall tone Mm -hmm. what is the theme what is the emotions that people are going to be feeling during this series because this could really impact the colors that they use, the the visuals that they use. And so, again, first commandment of yeah. sermon series graphics is, is really you got to start with asking questions and defining yeah. those those things. And here's, here's like an illustration for that. If you're preaching through the book of Job or like you're preaching on grief or don't suffering. Don't use yellow. <laughs> yeah, you don't use like a yellow with like a skateboarder doing a trick on the front yeah, because right. it doesn't reflect your topic and so if you do use someone who d- designs your your work for you 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 need to be able to give that to them and say but hey this is like this is the feel of it yeah. this is what i want so that even if they've never you know even if they they don't know what the book of job is about or they don't know what your series pieces is like they will understand oh pieces it's talking about being broken this is the color palette. This well, is the imagery I need to go to. And since you brought up Job, if you, you want to get like really ninja on this, you could start the series with a more desaturated, uh, more somber tone and color palette. And then as you work through the series, it, it, it becomes a little bit more <laughs> vibrant. <laughs> or maybe it gets like I, darker. Yeah, yeah, like. And then at the very, very end, yeah, yeah, the yeah. last week. Yeah. Uh, I, I can yeah. really nerd out on this, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this the second. Uh, commandment, um, the second piece of advice we'd give you is is to know your audience, to make sure you know the design fits your church. So 
what type of approach do you have? Uh, who is your audience? Obviously, I mean, you can you can go on Ministry Pass and you can p- compare the adult designs to the youth designs. You're going to notice consistently the youth has a lot more color. It's a little edgier. Uh, within Ministry Pass, we also have what we would like our very clean, polished design. Yeah. Um, for for a, a church like that, or maybe an edgier design for a church that's maybe a little bit younger. So know your audience. We try to provide a lot of different styles to help you out, but know your audience and understand uh, what works well for them. Uh, what works well in front of your building, if you're going to put this on a screen or on a banner, uh, you just you need to know who you're speaking to. Yeah, another commandment is prioritize clarity over cleverness. Oh man, and I made this mistake, and this goes for really marketing in general, right? A lot of times you'll see mom and pop like pole companies try to get real cute with their ads around you know a yard mm-hmm. sign or out near their business, and it's just like uh, you know. If this were clear, it would be so much more impactful and helpful yeah. than you just trying to be clever or just creative for the sake of being creative. And I think churches, you know, I'm in all kinds of church and ministry Facebook groups, and I see this like at least once a month, maybe twice a month, and it's like, hey, post your current sermon series. And it is literally a dumpster fire of, of, of churches trying to be clever over clear. And I mm. think a lot of times we we create graphics and we create series titles that are just unnecessary Mm -hmm. you know our people would connect better if it was just a clear solid title where they understand they know what to expect really so that's and and if you do if you use something that's a little bit more clever have a good subtitle yes i was in some sort of talk years ago and they were like they were like be they were talking about being clear with ministry names they're like you go to a church and there's like come to our youth group it's called sabotage or come it's called rebellion and you're like well like why is this all this sounds very dangerous to yeah me. so if you do use something edgier you could say like sabotage and then you could do the uh the subtitle could be the way that we hurt ourselves yeah or something like that but just be clear so when people look at it they're just they're not like i have no idea what they're talking about um so yeah be be have clarity and then this kind of goes along with that timelessness over trends you'll utilize the sermon better and it will still be relevant in three years if the design is timeless so uh sometimes it's okay to have a really like edgy design or something that's in in fashion but i really think that that you should do something that's that's it, it can be edgy but but within a safe realm and a lot a lot of that has to do with fonts i think well yeah fonts are a big part of this you know one of the reasons why uh, you, you this is important is because once you post your message or your series on your website which most churches do right mm-hmm. it's there it, it, you, no one really like curates their sermon series for the most part they just keep adding to it every week and so when a, a new guest comes to your website or they moved into the area and they start looking through, exploring your sermon series, you want the, that stuff to be sort of timeless regardless of if it was this year or five years from now because the content is timeless. Mm. There, you don't want someone not to listen to your series be, because the visual, the visual representation of that series is like so out of date looking. Mm-hmm. And so that, that that's another thing that you want to take a look at. Another thing is, Think beyond your screen. You have projectors. You have your auditorium. What will it look like? You, you know, we have a, a a young designer intern that would send in designs a few summers ago, and they were just using a lot of stuff that didn't have a lot of contrast and a lot of white on grays. And I, we just had to say, hey, listen, not every church in America has a really expensive projector. 4K projector. <laughs> 4K right? projector. And even if you do, depending on the lights in your sanctuary, it, it, it could drown out some of the contrast like you're talking yeah. about if you're not careful. And, and a lot of the subtleties that they were trying, they were spending just so much time on that last 10%. I just had to say, listen, a lot of this is going to get lost on, on an old projector mm-hmm. at a church of, you know, 150 people that's and, been there for, you know, 20 years and they haven't upgraded their system in 10. 
Yeah, and, and two, when if you're if you're gonna print something or post it on social media, especially when you print it, usually with printing, simpler is best. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you might say, "Oh, that's too simple." But when you print it, it looks nice. So just keep all of that uh, in mind. The next one is don't steal graphics. So if there's a graphics uh, that you like from another church, just ask them uh, if you can use it first or purchase them purchase that, that's um, a novel idea yeah right uh don't don't have somebody download something from ministry pass and use it at your church right <laughs> do the right click and save on like <laughs> right. the small preview image and then it blows up and it's like going back to the old projector metaphor because the the people who do this the the designer down the street at the church that you like uh, this is their work of art. This is their work, and so if you're going to use it, make sure you get permission. Um, so, so don't steal, don't steal graphics. Uh, follow a style guide. What do I mean by that? Uh, you know, I think it's important if your church hasn't done it already. Uh, develop a style guide. So, what, what what is a style guide? A style guide consists of your logo, the fonts that you use, the colors that you use. And I know some of you are thinking, why is that important? Well, it creates a, a visual cohesion. It creates consistency for the communication pieces that your church puts out. If you can sort of follow that style guide for your series, that really really helps to build consistency. And so, not everything is is looking random all the time uh, you know I, I feel like a lot of the smaller churches that i've been in would benefit from having just an overall style guide because the the you know the men's ministry uses this font and these colors and this logo and the kids ministry uses these mm -hmm. fonts and there are some nuance like nuances right you don't want uh, times new roman on the kids banners i i get it but there does need to be some sort of letter of the law for your housekeeping things, hi yeah. housekeeping items. So it's, everything's the same and consistent. And your sermon series should should do the same. In fact, if you're able to develop a style guide for the series, that's even better. Because you say, hey, for this series, we're gonna be in this series for eight weeks. Everything that we print, everything that we design for this particular sermon series needs to utilize these colors, these fonts, this image set. And, yeah. that, and that's gonna create a consistent visual representation of the content for you. Yeah, and even if we put lo if you put your church logo on it, maybe you want a logo on every single one, just how, did, how is that used? Um, this next one is, is something that we've kind of talked about in a sense, but we wanna make clear, prioritize content over creativity. Uh, so you wanna be creative. Um, but really think through, like, what is the content? So you might come up with a, we've all done it before, you come up with this really cool sermon series name, and you're like, that's awesome, but you don't really know what part of the Bible you're gonna preach from. So I have a, I have a series in mind. When we were we were on SAP together, yeah, and we did that series. You know, what I'm talking about yeah. outer space. Outer space. It's like we got these environmental projections for the first time. We're like, what kind of series can we do with yeah. environmental projectors? We did a series called Outer Space, and it was like the worst series I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. And it was because we didn't we started there and yeah. not the you know starting with the, the content of God's word or like, hey, what do we want to communicate in this series? It was it was it was backwards really. Yeah. And in actually in just a few minutes we're gonna sit down with our planning team for Ministry Pass and talk through our new sermon series. And what we try to do yep. is when we talk about topics or this, we say, Okay, like what like this is a cool name, but like what would it be about? We try to to start with the content as best as we can. Uh, get feedback from the right people. Uh, people, and, and not just designers, but the right yeah. people in your church, uh, your audience, but get feedback from those individuals because here's what happens. We've, we've seen this before. We've seen um, people, as a designer, you're really proud of, of something and mm -hmm. it might not be very good, but because you made it, you like it. So get feedback from the right people and be open to them uh, give, providing that insight. And as a pastor too, don't get too hung up on everything. Like, if you have professionals that do work for you, uh, you you might have something in your mind, but but be able to trust the professionals too. Why do we say the right people? I think that's the important part of that that statement, right? The right people. The reason why the right people are important is because if you send your your series artwork to Sister Papoufnik and say, "Hey, what do you think about this?" Well, Sister Papoufnik doesn't have any background in communication, church mm -hmm. community, marketing, graphics. So her feedback to you could be confusing, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you're asking the wrong type of... So, so maybe the, the, the 
advice or feedback you're soliciting isn't even at your church. It's other church communicators, other people. There's there's Facebook groups, uh, church communicators, the Kenny Jang and Katie Alred, they run that group, and mm. you could get great feedback on some, some series of designs. You could ask it in the pastor circle as well, our Facebook group. But there's a lot of qualified and experienced individuals where you could get that feedback for that's not going to be as confusing as it would be some you know, deacon at your church, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So be able to find that. And, and I, I also think, too, you know, getting the audience their feedback and saying, like, is this confusing? Like, that can be helpful. You just got to find, find the right way to do that. The last one, uh, spell check. Just, just check your spelling. Just uh, gotta do it. Yeah, and, and even just uh, making sure you're saying the things the right way. You know, like if you say add on, uh, I think you're supposed to do, you know, ADD dash ON instead of ADD space ON. Things like that are just really important. We, we had a, this wasn't a series, but we were doing this community outreach thing, and I was at a, at a town called Mont Bellevue, and in that school district, or the, really the main school there, is Barbers Hill. And Barbers Hill Eagles are, is the mascot, and our church was wanting to do this thing. We're like, hey, we're, we we support the Eagles, so they had me design some T-shirts that said, "We support the Eagles." Well, I, I guess I did it. You, quickly. you thought it was the band, the Eagles, and yeah. So <laughs> there it is. Tell California on there. There it is. When the T-shirts arrived, all four hundred of them in the boxes, it said, mm. "We support the Eagles." Oh man, and I was—I was man. I've been at the church for like a month, and I thought my pastor was gonna be so mad at me. It's like we just wasted all this money. And to his credit, he said, "Well, um, we can't use those. Order some new ones." And that's all he said about it. And I was like sweating bullets. Right? He's—he's gonna, he's gonna fire me over this, but um, he didn't. I was young. I was young, and I learned from that the day on. Send your work to people. Hey, you can send it to Sister Papoopnik. I'm not looking for advice on the design. Just. Is everything spelled correctly on this? Is it spelled, is it spelled correctly? Uh, so make sure you do that. Hey, we appreciate you listening. Yeah. Subscribe on Apple iTunes, YouTube, and Spotify. And something that's really, really helpful is to leave us a review on, on Apple iTunes. That's like one of the most important things that you could do to support the podcast. So the podcast sure is free. That. So yeah. <laughs> and once again, comment if you have any questions. Comment who does your designs. And uh, you can do that on YouTube or as we mentioned below or earlier, you can email us at hello at ministrypass.com. So hello at ministrypass.com. Yep. So thank you. Thanks for tuning in for this episode of Hello Church. We'll see you next time. See you.